Hello and welcome to another in my life heart lesson series. Sorry for the slight delay. It's New Year. Happy New Year. Happy 2020. And please tell me if you also find it a bit hard to get back into the routine despite it being more than a week of the new decade. I feel sometimes as I'm still struggling. Let me know, please, if you can hear me and see me all right. That will be helpful as well. I hope we will um, see some of you here, even though there's been a bit of a break and it's after Christmas. <clears throat> I hope you have your cup of tea or coffee if you haven't woken up yet. I'll just have a sip while waiting for you to arrive. Mm. Today's topic will be what to expect in your first harp lesson. So I'm sure it will be of interest mainly to uh, many to beginners, but not only. I know that there are many people and many harpists out there who have taken harp lessons in the past, but for some reason they took a break or some people who were learning to play on their own and would like to start lessons with a teacher. So I'll try to explain what to expect in a first meeting with your new, te new teacher in a consultation or trial lesson, what's going to happen and if there's anything to be afraid of. <laughs> no, there's nothing to be worried about. It's mainly a chat, that first lesson, mainly a chance to get to know um, your teacher and for the teacher to get to know you and see what's the best way for them to help you. I can see someone is has tuned in on Facebook. I hope you can hear me all right. Please let me know if you don't. And as always, please remind me to speak a bit more slowly if you can't hear me. I hope the volume is okay today, but if you can give me a bit of a feedback, if you're watching live, then that would be most appreciated. Let me just check my notes. Oh, one more very important point for those of you who are here for the first time. My name is Zuzanna and I'm a harpist and harp teacher based in Edinburgh, Scotland. Um, quite important to introduce myself. Uh, sometimes I forget it, which is why I have those notes uh, reminding me to say what my name is. Um, I, I see that some people are tuning in on Instagram. Please let me know if you can hear me all right. Um, I hope everything is fine on Facebook as well. So we will start with that with the topic, with the theme of today's lesson. So first harp lesson, well, regardless whether you are a beginner or whether you've played the harp before, you might feel a little bit nervous and it's absolutely normal to feel nervous. I am quite a shy person myself and I always find it a bit um, strange when meeting new people and especially meeting someone with whom I would expect to have some kind of regular contact and I find it quite important to to just feel okay with that person. So that first lesson is just a chance for you to see how do you feel around your teacher and how do you feel being around with them and are you happy to carry on meeting them quite regularly for the um, for the prolonged period of time. So. Uh, your teacher might be nervous as well. <laughs> Please keep that in mind. Even even though um, they have seen many, many students, they are still um, curious who's that person on the other side. And the reason why they will be asking some questions is not to put you through some kind of an exam, but just to get you to know a little bit better and being able to help you as best as they can. So um, most of the lesson will be probably just a chat, a relaxed chat. Even if you played the harp before, you don't have to be nervous and uh, worry that you've forgotten everything and uh, if your teacher asks you to play, you will sound horrible. Um, so there is definitely nothing to worry about then. You will probably play a bit in the lesson. Even if you're a complete beginner, you will probably still get to try the harp and play a bit. So that's uh, definitely the pleasant part, nothing to be afraid of. What kind of teachers your question? Um, what kind of questions your teacher might ask? I've prepared a little list here for you. You can download it for free from my website. The link is uh, in the description of that live on Facebook, and you will be able to also find it on Instagram um, when you go to the link in the bio. And here I've prepared a list of questions which I would definitely ask any new students and I think quite a few harp teachers would be asking that but if you um, if you come for a for your first lesson it's quite useful to have a little think about this um, I hope you can see it on Instagram as well I've prepared a little bit of space here so you can even print that out and uh, put down your answers just so you remember all those things if you want to talk about something specific 
So the first question um, I would normally ask to someone who comes for the lessons is why do you want to start the lessons? Why do you want to play the harp? What was mo your motivation? Was it a performance that you that you were inspired by or was it a recording that you heard and that you liked? Or was it always your dream but you couldn't find the time or you couldn't afford it or your parents told you that it, this is too huge of an instrument to play? So please put your answers in there and try to think a little bit more about this. It's fine if you can't really explain that reason. I um, I find it definitely quite a complex question to answer. So it's absolutely fine to say that uh, you just want to do it and that's fine as well. The second question which your teacher might ask um, in that first lesson and that they might ask you again later um, after some, some time is what music would you like to play because they would want to pick the pieces that you will find most interesting and rewarding to play. So um, while it might be quite hard to answer that if you haven't played the harp before, you can definitely t spend some time looking at harp recordings on YouTube or listening to um, harp albums on Spotify. For beginners, I've compiled a small playlist which shows the three main types of... Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, Instagram, the battery is running low. If that dis gets disconnected for some reason, just tune in on Facebook or go later to, to my page. So I've compiled a list of uh, pieces of different genres, three different main type of genres of music that you may find out there, classical, traditional slash folk and modern slash pop slash jazz. So you can have a little listen if you want to have a little think about what are the differences about them, how do you like them. Uh, that playlist uh, can be found in the part three of my ebook, Discover the Harp, and I will put the link to downloading that to where you can download that. There are lots of lots of useful things in that ebook. I was talking about this in the last live harp lesson two weeks ago, so you can also watch that to uh, know in a bit more detail what's what's in there. Hello Eva, good to see you. And then the next question after what music you would like to play would be, have you got any previous musical experience? And it's absolutely fine if you don't, it's not a prerequisite for learning to play the harp. It's just for your teacher to know um, if you know anything at all about how the music is notated, if you have any experience of what the rhythm is like, because then they will just start from a slightly different level with you and they will not explain things that you might know already. So that's the only reason to ask that. Um, so if you played any other instrument, they will want to know what instrument did you play, because if you played a recorder, for example, then you will be probably quite used to reading the music in the treble clef, which on the harp will be where the right hand mostly will be playing. And if you, for example, play the cello, then you would be reading the music in the bass clef. So you would be more familiar with the register, with the notes that the right, uh, sorry, left hand would be playing. So that's the only reason. And they will certainly want to know if you studied the harp previously, um, what was your experience? Did you learn on your own? Did you study with teacher? What pieces did you play? And so on. That will al always help them to know a little bit more about how to plan the future lessons. And then the last question and the answer to the question might change as you learn more about the harp and as you learn to play, but your teacher would probably like to know where do you see your harp playing and yourself with the harp in the future? What is your goal? What is your dream when it comes to the harp? Would you like to play with others? Would you like to play with other harpists or other instrumentalists? Would you only prefer to play at home? Is it mainly for your own pleasure or playing for your family? or if uh, you're thinking perhaps to do some, to go for some exams, it's absolutely not necessary, but some people like to have this kind of achievement where um, they are told, okay, you've passed this level, that's the level of your hard playing. So um, if you want to do that, then that's important for your teacher to know so they can again plan how to progress and what kind of um, extra materials they should prepare for you. So these were the questions and I've also prepared some space on the on today's PDF for you to put your own questions because you definitely want to ask your teacher something as well. 
Um, I saw a great article by Harpy's uh, Anne Sullivan, who's got an, an amazing blog, Harp Mastery. There was a blog post by her, um, I think the title was Interview Your Harp Teacher. I'll put the, the link in the description of that live. And that was very interesting, um, some ideas that she put in there of what you can ask your teacher in that first lesson, how you can make sure that the teacher is the right person for you to in your harp journey. So uh, definitely interesting to read that and maybe use it as an inspiration to ask your your own questions. Then in the lesson, you would we would probably look at sitting at the harp before we play anything. We would just see how to manage that instrument, which can be quite heavy even if it's small. We would make sure that you feel comfortable and that um, your body is sitting in the most healthy way. And you can also find some more information about that in the Discover the Harp ebook, the same ebook, ebook I mentioned earlier. And you will also be able to see a bit more about sitting at the harp in a short video I made a while ago. I explained there that we're not really balancing the harp, um, resting the harp on our shoulders. We need our shoulders and arms to be free um, in order to manage uh, moving from one part of the harp to another. We're actually resting the harp on our knees and in order to make sure that it's not too heavy on any part of our body, we are uh, using a little trick to balance the harp. So I'll put the link to that video in the description of the live as well, do check it out. And finally, when we're all sat and comfortable and feeling uh, at ease with the harp, we will do a little bit of playing and here is a, um, an explanation for people who would be uh, n who haven't hired the harp, who haven't got their own harp before starting the lessons. If you're coming to have a, your first lesson in person, for example, if you came to my studio here in Edinburgh, you would be able to use my own harp. I've got three different instruments so we can see what would be best for you. Most students find themselves most comfortable with this harp, which is a liver. 34 string uh, harp by Kamak, but we also have other instruments to look at. If you are um, interested in having an online lesson and you haven't got your own instrument, then we would probably focus only on chatting and finding out what your needs and expectations are. We would also discuss where you can find an instrument. I will probably ask you where in the world are you based and in um, in advance of our first lesson I would do a little bit of research on where you could hire a harp and we will try to make sure that this is the appropriate instrument and that it arrives relatively quickly for you to be able to start your first lessons. But if you're here in me, with me in that first lesson you will be definitely able to start playing. We will be playing first one hand at a time, either right hand or the left hand and we will be using only one finger to start with, that will be the index finger, second finger. And we will probably start without music or without any um, sort of agenda in mind. We will just start picking different strings and just exploring what it feels like playing the harp in different registers. We would probably play a scale, our first C major scale with just second finger. And then we would probably play um, some piece of music without using the notation but just trying to work out how do you play uh, the harp, where the notes are, what differences are between them and so on. You can prepare for that first lesson by practicing something really simple away from the harp which is preparing to articulate, close your fingers while playing and relaxing them. So you can do that by just closing the fingers inside the hand and letting them relax. The important thing is that they close sort of straightish, so not going in curled like that, uh, but not too tight either here, and that you open them, let them touch the palm of the hand, uh, sorry, close them, let them touch the palm of the hand, and then you release them very quickly. I'll try to show it from the side, uh, just trying to find the best angle for that. So this kind of movement, okay? You can almost hear them making the sound, and if you are, uh, if your fingers are quite strong, then you can hear them making this kind of noise. So this is quite a useful exercise. Your thumbs are staying out because we will want to keep them high, even if we're playing with that one finger. Um, then after that, after just playing a little bit around with the harp, we would be looking at introduction to reading music on the harp. That will be the same both for beginners without previous musical experience and for, um, and for someone who already played another instrument, we will look how 
the notation is organized on the harp that the treble clef, the top line is for the right hand, the bottom line will be for the left hand, and we'll just see how they both connect, what's the, what kind of relation is happening between them. You can again look at the ebook Discover the Harp to see a bit more about that. I'm explaining how you can understand it better in your mind, how the two lines are actually not something completely separate. It's not like reading two lines of text. It's um, actually, there is a connection between them which makes it a bit easier. So do check out that uh, part two of the ebook. And then we will probably play a simple piece together, either with the music or without. We might play something um, like a well-known classic of Twinkle Twinkle, Little Star. We might even perform a little duo with you playing the melody and me, your teacher, playing a bit of an accompaniment. So you can already have a lot of fun in that first lesson and if there's more time we can even get to trying out some Risandi, which is something everyone loves on the harp. So plenty of things can happen in that first half an hour session. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'm just checking my notes to see if there's anything else that I forgot to say and I have a feeling that there was something. So just let me have a look. Mm. No, I think it seems that I've said everything. So if you are, if there is anything else that you would like to know about that first lesson, if there's uh, something you're wondering about how to, um, whether you need to bring your own harp, um, that's definitely something you don't need to do. As I said, most teachers will have the instrument that you can use during the lessons. Um, it's fine even if you don't do all that preparation. It's absolutely fine to just turn up with no expectations and the teacher will still lead you in and they will just um, they will make sure that they ask you the right questions and lead you to find the right answers. Um, hello Leonardo and I'm glad that it all sounds good on Facebook. Okay, uh, if you are interested in learning to play the harp, the harp course is now open, the bookings for the spring a spring term of harp lessons with me is now open until next Friday, 17th of January. I've put the suggestions for some trial lessons for the next week. If you would like to have a consultation lesson and you're wondering if the harp course is right for you, you can now book a lesson with me through Facebook or through the link in the Instagram bio. I will also put that in the description on Facebook. You can also email me uh, or send me a private message and ask me any questions that you would like to ask. And um, I will probably be able to tell how many places I've got left after today because I'm still waiting for a reply for some continuing students who are who have booked provisionally booked their sessions for next term. But um, the sooner you book, the better because you will also need to make sure that you've got your own instrument, you've got the harp to practice on. If you want some more information about this, you can watch the episode from, I think, three weeks ago, where I was talking that you don't need to buy your own harp, that you can hire an instrument and sharing a bit more advice how to do that. So you can definitely find some inspiration in there. And I think that's it for today. I will be seeing you next week. And do check out the page of the harp course if you're interested. Send me any questions if you've got them. Hope you have a nice weekend. First, uh, no, not first weekend of 2020. It's already second weekend. Time, time flies. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your Friday and I'll see you next week. Bye.